So the subject today is this SIVA AUD pipeline module, a new module within SIVA. I will start this webinar with a very short introduction to F10 and SIVA. Then the main thing will be uh, a demo and in, uh, to this uh, new module. And then at the end, we will take some time for question and answers with the chat tools of your WebEx, as already said. Right, so extend probably you already, some of you, um, most of you know already us, some of you are already SIVA users. Uh, we are the main and the exclusive distributor of SIVA worldwide. Uh, we take care of the technical support to our users, we train the users. Uh, we have also other training programs regarding reliability. We are also a consulting company, uh, mainly uh, performing some modeling studies around ND in different uh, contexts. And uh, another brand of our uh, activity is Trendy. It's another tool, uh, Ziva. Trendy is a virtual uh, simulator to uh, train operators in a virtual environment for UT and RT. But let's focus on, on Tiva today, simulation software. It's actually, as you probably know, a dedicated tool for ND modeling and also analysis that comes with different modules, uh, UT, RTCT, ET, guided wave, uh, ACHM by guided waves, also thermography. And now a uh, brand new module is called AUT pipeline. So it's UT, but uh, dedicated to a certain applications, automated UT. Uh, and this is the purpose of this webinar today. Uh, also, let's mention that in SIVA, you also have some analysis tools and now data science tools to uh, manage data for machine learning uh, diagnostic uh, process. Right, CEA uh, develops SIVA software and extend us are the distributor of this tool, exclusive distributor. That's it. I think to introduce SIVA. Uh, so we'll talk about modeling. Why using modeling? Uh, different purpose for that. Uh, first of all, of course, to prepare and design inspections. You can use uh, computations to uh, virtually design an inspection scenario and try to optimize it, gain some information, and then save time and money because you need less mockups and less trials to, uh, to design or optimize the process. You can use this as an expertise tool to try to understand complex field situations by repeating an inspection by software virtually. You can also use uh, modeling to support performance demonstrations. This is particularly the case for this module AUT pipeline. Uh, performance demonstrations relies on a lot of mockup tests. And if you can replace some of the mockup tests by parametric studies, it could be very efficient and very cost efficient. Right, and you can also think about using modeling to illustrating uh, inspection scenario for discussion and convincing, and also for training. Right, so within SIVA, you have this new module, SIVA AUT pipeline, that can be uh, purchased as a standalone module or along with SIVA UT or other modules. The uh, target of this tool is to model Gears web inspections and mainly to support performance demonstrations of ghost well inspections uh, in pipelines. It comes with two ranges of tools, uh, dedicated tools that are really specific to these modules that will be quite well guided and will guide you through the process of performance demonstrations, step by step, from the simulation of the calibration mockup, to verify settings and verify all channels, to then the uh, assessment of essential variables for sensitivity analysis, from which you can extract uh, specific indicators that you need to, uh, let's say, to, uh, to, to, to compute in a frame of qualification or project validations, uh, which are sizing accuracy indicator and POD curve indicators. POD indicators, let's say. This module also includes, let's say, more generic SIVA modules, well, like SIVA UT, but dedicated for girls' wells. Uh, this range of modules are less guided, but will be uh, suitable to prepare uh, your, uh, your probe, to design your probe, to define or select different probes, and maybe optimize the procedures before uh, running the performance dimension. 
demonstration process test. SIVA AEDU pipeline is available today for ZDM technique and TFM techniques. We'll try the demo with the, say, the generic SIVA tools, uh, SIVA UT tools within SIVA AUT. Uh, well, the purpose here is to define one channel, then simulate the response of the target flow. Different shows are available, maybe to simulate the sunbeam so that you can design, select a probe, define the settings, the phase array settings, the allows and uh, the, the range of elements you want to use, maybe change and optimize settings, maybe validate the response you have obtained by simulation with a, with a real mockup that can also help to validate the use of modeling in this, uh, in this context. Okay, uh, so uh, the first part of the, of the work can be, can be proposed, can be, can be done here. Then we will go to the dedicated tools in the second step. Let's go for our demo of this, let's say, generic modules first. I will switch my window to SIVA. Okay, this is the SIVA desk. Within SIVA UT, you have AUT pipeline, new modules. Oh, I go there. And so the first line here are these generic modules, beam computation, sensitivity coverage, inspection simulations. And the second line of tools are the dedicated ones, AUT calibrations, AUT sensitivity, AUT sizing, AUT port. I'll start with the first line, then we'll see the main thing, which is this, the second line. So let's initiate one uh, case with one channel first. So I just validate the default configurations and I will uh, load a first CIVA case. I will be in the user interface to define a specific SIVA case, right? Okay, so for those who know SIVA UT, it's pretty similar. You have a graphic representation of a component, in this case, uh, a pipeline and a weld, uh, a probe here, and you have different panels available at the bottom to define your own parameters, usually from left to right. Okay, let's start with the specimen. So here, specimen deals with the test piece. You can notice that here you are, you can only do girls weld, which is represented here. Of course, it's a full SIVA UT, you have other type of components, but we dedicated in AUT Python to girls weld inspection. And then you have some parameters to define your own components. So let's change the outer uh, diameter, for instance, the inner radius to a, uh, a bigger components. Let's change uh, the lens, okay. Okay, let's talk now about the weld itself, the top bit, bottom bit, some data sheets to, to fill in. Uh, the thickness of the pipe is mentioned here. Let's put, for instance, one, one inch. Uh, and then the bevel, you are different bevel shape available here, V, U, or X. Okay, let's get to, uh, to V. Okay, and define the parameters, 60 degree angle, bevel angle in this case, and then the geometry has been refreshed in the 3D view with your own settings. Okay, let's assign carbon steel as uh, the material. Right, and let's go in further. Okay. Second, uh, second panel, the, the probe. So you have uh, uh, here uh, some uh, data sheets to fill in the uh, different parameters of the probe. You can load them from a manufacturer's library, which is available on this button here. Probe library, you have a, a new menu from which you can select different probes, or you can fill in the, here the parameters from the data sheet, let's say more manually. Okay, so let's define 64 elements, linear array, a pitch of 0.7, uh, an elevation of 20. Okay, let's assume a flat element, then let's assume also a flat wedge in the next tab, made of, for instance, plexiglass. You can select that again from the database of material properties. Okay, and wedge dimensions. Are defined here the length, the width, the height of the wedge, 
you can see that each time I, I change the parameters, the 3D view is updated. Uh, the wage angle will be such that you refract 60 degree shear wave. And this probe is a 4 megahertz. So let's change the center frequency here. Okay. Oh, my probe has been updated with this new information. Okay. Let's put it right next to the to the weld cap in this case. Okay, so I can define here uh, different defect types, and I will simulate the defect response, maybe to validate this simulation with a with a real experiment, for instance, in the first stage. You can see that in this list you have different type of flow from rectangular planar flows to multifacets, to more complex shapes or uh, also uh, calibration shapes, calibration refractor. Let's define a 4 by 3 flow that appears here in red and let's position it uh, around the chamfer zone, for instance. Let's put it 12.3 millimeter. And let's put all angles to zero up to align my uh, flow with the chain. Okay. Okay. Then you have to define the, the PA setup. If you want to use modeling to define your PA setup, we will see also that later that you can load lows from uh, from uh, maybe a real system. But at the moment, let's say I will use uh, settings from Siva to compute and try delay lows. Okay, in this case, I will define a channel to target this area, so such like a zonal discrimination method approach. Okay, uh, so I'll select the first set of elements as a transmitter and another set of elements as a receiver. 16 elements in this case. All right. And then I will define a focusing ZDM relies on focused beam uh, and I will define the focal points to target this zone, this flow in this case, which is located in the zone of interest. Okay, let's do this depth. Oh, you can navigate directly with the mouse focus point to the location of interest. Okay, for transmission, then for reception. Okay, I will use a blue point to put it on the relevant location. Okay, and once validated, you can compute the low. Okay, and you have a ray tracing that show you where the rays should go. So transmission. Normally focused to the to the so, um, to the zone here, then reception reception elements here through this pass. Okay, so a uh, kind of tandem mode to reach this area in this case, right? Uh, okay, let's try to run this case first. As is, we have to we were in the preliminary preliminary stage, maybe to design my my inspection and to prepare the case and maybe validate. So I will define a uh, half skip, so uh, modeling, and we we'll scan a little bit around this flow by putting up. Okay, so I can scan around this, right? And you can run this. Oh, I will maybe just reset my focal loads to make sure it's still okay, right? And I'm running. So in these generic modules, you are you are less guided. It's more like the, the normal SIVA, let's say, uh, but dedicated to girls' wells. But it gives you the flexibility to change props, to define your own delays, delay lows, and so on. Uh, so uh, you can prepare uh, the procedures or validate it for for one channel first. The simulation should be quite short. You can see the progress bar here.
All right, and then you access to the uh, results of these channels here. You have a this can view with a and haze can view here. Okay, for the different probe locations you have simulated. Okay, you can put this on the 3D view if you want to evaluate and reconstruct the this can on the 3D CAD view directly. Okay, and you can compare um signal shape and signal amplitude to a real case for instance and, and maybe try to optimize it increase its sensitivity and so on try with other flows and so on okay uh in the generic modules you can also uh perform some sound beam uh simulations to also check the sound beam for this channel I, i'm switched to beam calculation i keep the same parameters but just defining a zone where I will visualize the sound beam of this of this probe. Up right located here around my well chamfer here, and I will just directly ask for beam in transmission and reception to get that sound beam images. There we go, you have the image of the beam available here. You can evaluate if it's well orientated, well adapted for this, this zone and these channels. Uh, directly on the 3D view also if you if you want. Okay. Okay, in this preliminary stage you can may optimize it and so on. And if you want to keep these parameters, the probe and the settings set up, you can go back to the model and save what you have defined, maybe optimize here in a certain file so that you can load it later in the specific modules. So I will select my probe, for instance, here. So saving this probe panel, and I can also save here the settings panel that includes all the setup, the active elements, the delay loads. I can save that also in an XML file, my low, which is in this case fill4, uh, fill4 channel name, um, middle of the fill zones. Okay, right, so it can be used afterwards. Right, so this was, let's say, the generic SIVA modules, but in this context, a UT pipeline dedicated to girls wells for design, optimization, verification, validation, uh, purpose of one channel. Second range of tools, uh, specific multi-channels modules. Now the goal is to involve all channels in the same set of simulations and not only one per one channel because this is more adapted to the uh, specific techniques that are applied for this uh, Geoswell's automated duty inspections. So you will be guided through the complete process from the calibration mockup, but now the full calibration mockup, not only one, in order to verify the settings and introduce the channels. And from that point, then you can go to the assessment of essential variables for sensitivity analysis to evaluate essential variables impact from which we'll be able to extract sizing accuracy and POD indicators. The purpose of this multi-channel environment is to save mockup tests when you are, especially in a performance demonstration context, uh, because you can uh, use these results to assess the impact of essential variables, uh, verify that maybe you can uh, only apply a specific validation project and not a full qualifications. If you can verify that this impact is similar to an already qualified systems, and you can extract some uh, relevant indicators, sizing, accuracy, and POD that can help to uh, to prepare your dossier. And by the way, you can save probably some mockup tests and money. Uh, you know that this performance demonstrations is governed in this context by some standards, DNB and and uh, DNB uh, ST one hundred one and uh, the recommended practice. Uh, RP118, 
uh, the simulation will be soon uh, mentioned in this RP uh, as, as a resource to, to support these performance demonstrations. Let's go for a demo of these multi-channel specific tools. I go back to my SIVA window. Okay, I can close this. Okay, and go back to my desk. And now I will go from left to right on this second line, starting with AUT calibration. Okay, so I can create a new project with a new name. Let's, let's say test, for instance. Very original name, right? And we are now in AUT calibration. At first glance, at first sight, it looks like SIVA. You have a 3D view and some information to fill in, but you can uh, notice that everything is grouped in the same panel, in this case, with different tabs. Uh, and you will have, uh, let's say, uh, less information to define. Everything is really pre well predefined in this, in this context. Uh, but then the process is pretty similar. Uh, logi logical order, of specimen, materials, props, scanning, channels, definitions, uh, before running uh, your model. You can see that on the top, this is there, that you can switch from ZDM to TFM. Uh, I will focus on ZDM. It will show you an example of TFM in the second stage. Uh, but this is there that you have this, these two uh, techniques available at the moment. New techniques will come in this context, uh, in these modules uh, later on. Okay, let's define my component, 16 inches in a radius, a certain length. Okay, uh, again, a certain weld profile and a certain bevel, so V, U, which is also uh, sometimes called uh, J uh, profiles. Okay, RX, VV are available here. You select the one you want to consider and you enter the parameters, angles, gap, root face here. At this stage, you can update the visualizations. Okay, to uh, see in the 3D view the new geometry. Then, second time, material, again, carbon steel. At the moment, only isotropic steel and homogeneous welds is available in this uh, in these modules. Uh, rather than the full SIVA, you have also anisotropy, cladding, and so on. So it's a target to also include cladding, CRA, and so on, also in these delicate modules uh, in, a, in a future version. At the moment, only homogeneous welds. Yeah. Uh, then probes. So in this case, you can directly load from the library again, or maybe from the one you have defined in SIVA, SIVA before, through an XML import, you can load your probe. So this is, this is what I will do. I will load my AUT probe that I have defined in the previous, uh, in the previous case, in the previous, uh, demo. Up. In here, a list of probes. I have a kind of list of probes available here. I can have only one if I, in my project will use always the same probe, but sometimes you have certain systems that are made of a set of different probes, so you could list here have a list of different probes available for the project. In this case, I will just keep my AUT probe here, and you can read here the data of the probes for megahertz. This is the same as I've just simulated before in the other module. All right, let's go to the channels tab now. So this tab will let you define all the channels and also the reflectors of the calibration mockup uh, here in the single tab. Uh, you can give a name to the tab, then you have different types of channel type that are available. Field type, for instance, will come with flat bottom holes orientated along the chamfer. You have root channels that will be associated to rectangular planar flow located at the, the root. Um, hot pass will be uh, calibrated with flat bottom, flat bottom holes, but 
the angle of the hole can be adjusted to the weld because you are for hot pass in this area where, well, you are more or less uh, uh, the transition zone between the field zone and the root zone. Uh, the cap channels will be calibrated with rectangular flow that will be located at the top. And finally, the volume uh, channels will be also flat bottom holes. And again, for volume, you have uh, the flexibility to change the angle of the reflectors, flat bottom holes, and it will be located within the, the center part of the world, in the main, the core part of the world. Okay, so you can define like this all channels uh, of, uh, of your inspection system. It can be, you know, 7, 10, 12, depending on the thickness and so on. Uh, in my first example, I would just define uh, three channels here. Oh, three field channels, let's say. So, field three, for instance, I define where it's positions, where the calibration reflector is positions. I define where, uh, what is the position of the probe versus the center line, 15 millimeters here, from point one two versus the weld. What is the, the depth of my channels and what is the thickness of my zone, which will lead to a certain diameter for a flat bottom hole. You associate that to a certain probe in your probe list. In this case, I only have one probe. This is this one that you can load here. And the setup. The setup, you assume here that you have already defined a setup before because maybe you have used SIVA for that or because maybe you have uh, an information from, uh, from the real system for that. So you just have here to load the setup files from this uh, this menu. You can load .low files that could come from, uh, for instance, uh, 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 an inspection system data, uh, text data. You can also directly load XML files that corresponds to SIVA, uh, SIVA ones. And in this case, PL3, in my case, is uh, this XML file. I can again update the visualizations and you see that the first channels have been created with the first reflectors here of the bottom holes corresponding to field 3. You repeat the process for the different channels you want to include in your models. In my case here, I will define three uh, field channels that you can go to more. So now I feel four. Okay, 12.3 depths, all right, and same props, and the setup is field four. This corresponds actually to the one I have shown you before. Then field five, minus 15 degree for the location of the reflector on the mock-up. Uh, depth is uh, up a bit above, no, 9.7 millimeter, 3 millimeter thickness. And the setup file is field 5 in this case. Okay, I, I will scan around this 20 degree. And again, you can update the visualizations and you can see the different channels and different reflectors. Okay, and you could continue the process like this to define the full calibration marker. Uh, upstream or downstream, and you can see here the probe orientation, positive or negative. Computation options, you can go to the full simulation in 3D with all channels response and all flows considered for all channels. This will be uh, uh, maybe the, the reference setup, 3D full. Uh, as an example, I would just here uh, run 2D partial one, which just consider uh, uh, quicker 2D simulations, but it's just a question of computation terms, actually. Uh, okay, and once you have defined everything, you can click on Generate here, and all the SIVA files behind this uh, multi-channel uh, definition are created here in your SIVA manager. You can, if you are a SIVA guy, you can open them individually to check how it is defined uh, in, a, let's say, a generic SIVA way, but if at this stage you directly have now a compute button that you can launch to run the calibration mockup simulation. In this case, 
with three field channels. So I've clicked on compute. That manager is open, is opening automatically. I hope you can see it. Uh, maybe I have to share another one, I don't know, to the view. Yes, I think I have to share it. Oh, so we can see it. Yeah, right. You can now see the batch manager. It has been launched automatically. Okay. And it's organizing the calculations one after the other. If you have a big machine, you can do parallel computations to speed up the process. In this case, just three field channels will take a minute, more or less, so it will, can be done on my laptop right now uh, in live, but uh, of course, if you include all channels in 3D, it's a bit longer, but typically it can be uh, half an hour to one hour to, to simulate a real case in 3D with many channels. It's, it's done already now for these three channels. And then you can go back to, to see by itself, and you have directly a results tab now available with the matrix of channels. The main cal calibration is done, so the main flows, main refactors is set to 0 dB, and the neighbor channels are also simulated with a certain amplitude. To have more information, uh, you can, of course, uh, I will show you a more complete simulation with more channels, so let me uh, navigate to load a case that we have done previously with more channels to show you. It's loading the file. All right, so it's there. Um, you have, in this case, we have defined not only field 5, field 4, field 3, but uh, also HP, outpass, root, volume 1, volume 2, cap, all seven field channels, and so on. So the results in the matrix of the different channels response and reflector response you have, you can see it has been simulated in 3D with response of from all flows, you have all amplitude received by all reflectors, and of course, on the diagonal, you have 0 dB by definition because this is the reference flow of each channel on the diagonal. Okay, you can have another representation of this, let's say, matrix of uh, channel response um, uh, by building a strip chart. Uh, to do so, there is just here one button to enable. Okay, strip chart, I can give a name. And you have, again, the full calibration visible in this representation will, from which you may are familiar if you are using, a, if you are doing AUT pipeline in ZDM method, uh, right? So you can see you have a, a color, uh, specific color palette sensitivity to each amplitude. And you can check the sensitivity of neighbor adjacent channels for each ones, to each ones, verify all settings are okay, and okay, if not, maybe you can go back to the generic modules to uh, change the setup, to uh, optimize it, and so on. But if you are okay, you validate this first answer, and you will calibrate the rest of the study versus this uh, simulation. You can also have access to individual uh, channel, if you want. You can edit, for instance, fill for here. And you see it in, let's say, a more conventional SIVA uh, analysis view with B scan again. Okay, this is field four here, so max is there. I can zoom in a little bit. The corresponding uh, signals, amplitude and time of flight, can put there. 
to visualize the B scan in 3D view and so on. You have access to this information here from all channels. You can load all of them and, and read of them. Another thing is that in this stage, you can also, instead of only calculating echoes on the reflectors, on the calibration mockup, you can also simulate coverage, field coverage. And in this case, I have selected all. So I have both echoes, what we have seen now, and also field coverage. It's available there for different group of channels. Uh, coverage image is, is available. Let's open the field coverage, for instance. I'm going to load the link, loading it. So this is actually, again, a kind of sound beam, but now for multi-channels. Initially, in my first demo, I show you a sound beam that to evaluate, to design uh, a, for, for, for a specific channel, but in this case, you can evaluate it for uh, um, different channels to verify the coverage. In this case, it corresponds to field one to field seven channels. You can see it on this image, verify, see where you have the max amplitude and so on, verify the the coverage or directly see the 3D view and you can notice that in this case maybe uh, next to the hot pass regions where uh, maybe field should also cover here maybe it, uh, it's not maybe optimized in this case and so uh, you, you may uh, use this information to optimize again the settings maybe field one uh, is, uh, or field two it could be optimized in this case that's just an example okay then we go to the second step. Once the calibration has been, let's say, validated, you can navigate to the AUT, AUT sensitivity modules. I click here. So now the purpose is to initiate a sensitivity analysis on essential variables uh, to estimate their impact on your inspection reliability. Okay, so it's directly initialized from the calibration. So it's, you have a summary of the calibration channels and their amplitudes, uh, and also a summary of the parameters of the components and, and so on uh, in the first tab. But the, where you have to do is to go to the navigate to the second tab. This is where you can uh, study different essential variables. So uh, you can uh, define up to seven essential variables. Um, for your study, which are the pipe thickness. You can estimate what is the impact of the variability of the pipe thickness around its uh, expected value. So you define a, a minimum and a maximum value. You can uh, simulate. Let's see what happens to the inspection reliability if I have sometimes uh, pipe thickness that goes maybe down to 24 millimeter and up to 27 millimeters instead of uh, 25.4, which was the nominal value. Uh, defect, defect, uh, defect lens can be also estimated. Prop position, the so standoff of the prop versus the weld. It's also a can, there's also a kind of uncertainty here during uh, field operations, of course, when you position the scanner on the on the on the pipe, uh, so depending on this, the accuracy of this stage, it can affect the sensitivity of your inspection. So you can estimate here a certain variability of the proposition. Uh, speed tear wave, wave velocity. Uh, yes, of course, and especially because in this case, temperature is often can be can be an issue, and it has an impact of on the wave velocity. So you can estimates the impact of, of variation of temperature to the shear wave, so then uh, to the acoustic propagation of uh, the sound of the system. Okay. The last column here allows you to include them or not, these variables. You can untick if you want not to explore this impact of each variables. So it's optional essential variables for your study. And then you have three uh, mandatory essential variables that you will include all the time. It deals with uh, flow. It deals with flow location, depth min, depth max, in the zone of inspection. So for field seven, you have here a range of flow depths that can vary. You can expect that it's, it's navigate around a certain uh, area, but you cannot sure that the flow is at certain depths. 
you can change this value, of course. Uh, the flow size, so between which minimum and maximum flow size you do your sensitivity analysis and a flow tilt, uh, tilt angle that will reflect the, the shape of the bevel. For for instance, and you can also define a, a certain variability between, for instance, minus five to plus five degree. So up to seven variables for all channels, or maybe you can restrict the analysis to some of channels, but the idea is to maybe evaluate all channels. And then you define a certain number of scenarios. It's 10 here by default, but it's probably not enough. You have a simulation, so you have a computer, so you can uh, compute much more scenarios than 10, than 29, than, okay, so it's more something like a few hundred, maybe a thousand, to build um, a representative scenario of all your uncertainties to estimate impact of these essential variables. Uh, okay, and the sampling will be will be assigned. Let's mention that uh, the target flow here, uh, assumed in this case, not anymore, of course, uh, the flat bottom holes, uh, calibration reflectors, but it's a it's a planar flow with these uh, with these parameters. Once this table is defined, you click on Generate, and again, it will launch the uh, Batch Manager. Sorry, in this case, it it be a bit longer with all these channels. I will not run it live, but just to show you. Oh, no. After the generation. Of all SIVA simulations beyond this, you click Compute, and in the Batch Manager, up a list of new simulation is launched, and again can be splitted if you have a powerful computer. So to give you an idea, this case was run in about three hours in a powerful computer uh, by us, uh, as an example. So it's not uh, it's not days. Uh, of course, on my laptop it would take longer, and, and we will not wait for <laughs> the end of the simulations together. But okay, give you an idea. Okay, let's I console it at the moment, and we will directly open the results to show you what you can obtain at the end. So I will show you an example launched with the seven uh, field channels on this weld. Okay, just a few seconds to load it. Okay, the strip chart, then the sensitivity. I will open the sensitivity part here. Okay, right. So, variables assessment has been defined here. Then the results is available in the new tab. Okay, here you can select the which channel you want to study. So, I don't know, let's select field 4, for instance. Okay, this first tab just summarizes which simulations have been performed. So here from simulation number 0 to 1000, let's say, you can see the variation range of all parameters, flow height, flow depth, flow tilt angle, pipe thickness, flow length, uh, propositions, speed waves, and the corresponding uh, amplitude obtained on the, on the defect. Okay, give you an overview of the simulations that have been performed, but to analyze it, you will not use maybe this, this graph. You can use uh, viewers, 1D or 2D viewers. And the strong thing is that you will not only rely on this 1000 simulations, but from this, SIVA builds a meta model that allows you to access to a continuum of results and not just a grid of a of, of few simulations. Even if, of course, here you already have quite a lot of simulations to generate this. But, okay, let, let's open directly the viewers. For instance, here, this is the flow, the curve that shows the impact of flow height on the on the system signal. Okay, 
So you can see that you have a continuous curve. It's not just uh, 10, 20 uh, heights that have been done. And you can display it for all combinations of values for the other essential variables you have included. So for all flow depths, all tint angles, all pipe thickness, all flow lengths, all propositions, all speed wave, and you can, so you have uh, millions of scenarios beyond this, and you can display that for each parameter. For instance, what is impact of the flow depth for field four channels, for whole flow height, whole flow tilt angles, and so on, all pipe thickness. So you can estimate here, maybe you can put this scale in dB to be more uh, uh, self uh, speaking, uh, to be clearer, to evaluate the impact of essential variables when you have some viability, because there are some viability from one inspection to another one. Same thing, but with 2D viewers. So it means that now you have one parameter range here, another parameter range here. So for instance, depth and height, or maybe depth and tilt angles. Okay. And again, you see the impact with a now, not a curve, but a color chart. And you can have this information for combined with all other values of all other parameters. So again, you have millions of scenarios that you can explore like this and to estimate impact on the amplitude of viability of your essential variable. Next tab, one really uh, interesting graph here is plotted. This is this histogram is uh, the share of impact of the different essential variables to the outcome. So you can estimate which are the most influential essential variables, uh, depending on which variability, which variation range, and which slow of variability you assign, you assume for, for them. Okay. Uh, you can change, uh, for instance, the flow height to a constant value if you want to remove it. And then you have a new, a new diagram. So it's called Sobol indices and it's, it's a way to assess the, uh, a certain hierarchy between your essential variables impact. And maybe based on this, you can compare different systems together and justify that maybe you can rely on an already qualified project to go for a specific validation project and not a full qualification in your project based on all these results. Okay. On the top of this window, it's another parallel plot view, but now relying on the meta model, you can launch uh, a lot of scenario, I don't know, 500, and plot in parallel. And on the right, this is the amplitude. You can see which cases lead to, to which, which amplitude at the end, assuming different variability. So for instance, okay, let's assume that the depth is not uniformly varying or maybe more the tilt angle is not uniformly varying between minus five and plus five degree, but more concentrated around the nominal value of zero degree. You can enter a normal law to describe this. Up, you apply and you extract from the meta model another scenario and you have another range of outcomes from that. So really powerful uh, tools for sensitivity analysis. And then at this point, you can extract from this, from this sensitivity analysis, from this multi meta model, you can extract specific indicators that are useful in this context, sizing accuracy and POD curve. To do so, you go back to the desk, then you click on AUT sizing. It takes the meta model and the results you have from the sensitivity analysis. Okay, for a certain number of flow size and certain number of draws per flow size and plots, the estimated size versus real size. Uh, real size is the flow size you have entered in your model. Estimated size is the obtained a measured AUT estimated size based on a certain algorithms, which is in ZDM uh, obtained by uh, comparing uh, main channel and adjacent channels amplitudes. Okay, and so for each flow size, you have a certain variability of the estimated size, and you can estimate indicators such as uh, uh, 
5% oversizing and 5% undersizing limits, which is here. That can be useful in this context. If you want another scenario, because you rely on a meta model, you can resample it on demand. You can ask more size, maybe, I don't know, uh, more joules per size, and automatically, automatically, real time, you have a new set of new data set that you can evaluate. And then uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, POD now, click on AUT POD. You can plot POD curves for one or several channels, or maybe all channels. Let's start with one, fill four, for instance. If you click OK, you can build a POD curve. It takes all the simulations and all the uh, data model results to create all the data sets versus flow size for one channel here. Here you have one POD curve, but of course, before analyzing it, you need to make sure it corresponds to your case. So it's, uh, you can define how many flow size you want between the minimum one and the maximum one. Maybe I want, uh, I want more. And how many trials you want to evaluate, how many scenarios, inspection scenarios you want to evaluate for each flow size. I can also require as for many more because I have a meta model. It's cost anything now. It costs nothing. And you can assume different variability for the essential variables you have kept in your study. So uh, normal low, for instance, maybe accepted for flow deaths, which is more relevant to you don't know why the flow in the zone, so a uniform law is more uh, appropriate. Uh, and you apply to create a new data set from which a new POD curve is obtained. Of course, to be meaningful, you need to define relevant thresholds. So for that, you can enter the reference value you can know from the calibration on the previous case, and then the threshold. For instance, if I put 100%, it means my decision threshold is uh, flat bottom all uh, amplitudes. And based on this, I have here a certain, uh, a certain uh, A1995. Uh, you can see that A1995 is around 3.3, .3, for instance. And of course, if you change the decision thresholds, it's changed uh, A1995, the flow size for which you obtain 90% purity with 95% confidence. Okay, you can save it and so on. Uh, and you can also build such POD curve for uh, not only one channel, but all channels. This is uh, uh, fun done like this. So I've selected the seven field channels I have included in my study in this example. So that all the uh, data, data points are accumulated. And if the max is obtained on the neighbor channel, this is all, this one which is considered in the POD curve data set. And there we go. A new POD curve considering the seven channels. Again, the first one is just an initialization, but you can change the POD parameters. So let's say I want now 30 flow sizes, uh, 40 cases per flow sizes. You can see that you have here calibrations to put all channels to comparable amplitudes. Uh, okay, I would still assume for flow depths a uniform low and normal low for all the essential variables. And I apply to build my POD curve considering all channels. Uh, again, it miss analysis is more relevant uh, and uh, Okay, uh, so my reference amplitude in this case is this point, this value, to make sure to be properly calibrated and to put a relevant detection threshold. Okay, 100% versus flat bottom holes will give me in this case 3.2 uh, A1995. Again, you can evaluate how it changes when you decrease or increase the decision thresholds. Of course, if you increase decision thresholds, you will be uh, you will obtain a 1985 
for larger flow size if you decrease lower flow size but you could also expect more false alarms and so it's always a question of compromise right so this was the full process for zdm example let's uh, let's see before uh, letting uh, time for questions let's see just uh, a, a file including tfm it's built in the same way you have uh, for tfm again uh, access to the generic siva modules to test different setup and so on to try different setup and to to save the, the setup and the, the prop data and then you have again uh, you have again to follow then the, the specific modules from calibration to sensitivity and so on you can follow that with with a with a, with a tfm case okay here this is tfm you can see the corresponding calibration mockup that has been defined here okay right oh, different about on all so more or less pretty similar uh, user interface main difference is that in the list of channels you have again root cap fill outpass volume but also cross which is a through world uh, channel with uh, uh, two probes one upstream one downstream okay so specific to compared to what we had before uh, and of course accepted that also different is that you have a reconstruction zone to define okay. here located around the, the world in this case it's a it's a u uh, bevel type huh? j bevel type and uh, this zone is defined here a certain size and a certain step size huh? you have to uh, to follow the code to uh, to have a minimum flow size and step size sorry uh, to, to define here and then again you can select calibration then go to sensitivity analysis in which will vary essential variables values and so on uh, so let's see for instance uh, Feel for, uh, no, not for this one, but feel for results. Oh, not feel for, and feel. Okay. Okay. So if you uh, navigate to the relevant flow, you can see, for instance, here the T scan on the calibration mockup for one of the channels here obtained by by TFM technique in this case. Right. So uh, that's it for the <coughs> the overview of what you have in Siva AUT pipelines. So again, uh, two range of tools. Generic tools, pretty similar to Siva UT, focusing on, on Girls Wells to prepare, design, validate one channel, prepare one channel or channel per channel, and then the multi-channels dedicated tools, which is well, pretty well guided through the whole process from calibrations to uh, sizing and peeling. To know more about these modules and maybe to be trained to this module, don't hesitate to ask us to register for a training session. We have a few uh, sessions planned in our office in Messi or in Virginia, US, in which we can also uh, uh, discover this module, but you can also propose dedicated sessions with, with just a company if you want, if you prefer a dedicated session. 